Hello, Jeannie. Okay, Boomer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Today we'll be going uh, across the ocean to the Middle East, as I occasionally like to do. Actually, this is New York, but it has to do with the Middle East. I'll get to that in a minute. But first, I just want to share an interesting poll I saw today. It was on, well, I saw the report on the Fox Business Channel, but it's an ABC News Washington Post poll, and it's about the generic congressional vote. If you don't know what that is, that is, the question that's asked is, whom do you want to control Congress, the Republicans or the Democrats? And here are the results. Only 35 percent uh, of the respondents want the Democrats to be in control of Congress. Or to put it another way, uh, the way that I think they actually ask the question, when you vote in the midterm elections, will you be voting for the Democrat or the Republican? I think that's the actual question. And only 35 percent want the, the Democrats. 58 percent want the, the Republicans. That is uh, 23 percent point gap. I've never seen anything. I was only saying a few days ago that I, I saw a similar report uh, or a poll in the, from Rasmussen's uh, report saying something like 13 percent, something like that, or maybe only 8 percent. I saw a 13 percent, uh, whatever. I said I'd never seen anything like that. Now we're here and I have seen nothing like this. For sure. The only caveat I would have is that I believe this. Oh, no, I'm, I'm wrong. Uh, it's uh, I was going to say all adults, but it's actually of registered voters. So that's it's kind of in between. It's not just all adults who may or may not vote. And it's not likely voters with a history of voting in past elections, making making them more likely to, to vote in the next election. It's in between. These are registered voters. Uh, but I, well, I don't know about the Democrats, but the Republican voters are very motivated for this midterm election. So I would not be surprised to see a, a massive red wave, Republican wave in 2022, and not just in the House, but uh, in the Senate, too. I, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm hoping I don't expect this to happen. It's never happened in, in my lifetime, and maybe maybe never, who knows, when there was a, a, a filibuster-proof Republican Senate, that would change everything. If you had a, a, a filibuster-proof uh, Senate, Republican Senate, and a majority, a Republican majority in the House, and Donald Trump as president, or any Republican, but... God, I, you heard the phrase uh, about uh, liberal heads exploding. Lord knows. But we would uh, get some great accomplishments. Oh, by the way, I'm a conservative. Always keep that in mind when you evaluate whatever I say, such as what I'm going to say now, is that that would be a golden opportunity to overturn, to repeal Obamacare and replace it with something better, which would be a free market. Uh, system, or at least one based on competition. And that's it. Just wanted to share that. Now we get to the Middle East. As you may know, Ben and Jerry's company, they are, well, they're an American company, obviously, but they're uh, a subsidiary. The parent company is Unilever, and Unilever is a, a British company, a United Kingdom uh, company. I believe they're based in London. But they, their subdivision, Ben & Jerry's, announced some time ago, you may have heard about this, and uh, Ben and & Jerry's, that they would no longer allow or their ice cream to be sold uh, in the in East Jerusalem or anywhere, what they call the occupied territories, that they, and uh, uh, well, the, uh, the historical names, Judea and Samaria, that in Judea and Samaria, those were the ancient um, provinces of the kingdom of, of Israel when it existed uh, 2,000 years ago. Anyways, it's basically a boycott. It's basically a, a participation in the 
the BDS, Boycott, Divestment, Sanctions movement, this anti-Semitic movement to basically bankrupt Israel or isol and isolate Israel, failing on both counts. But what I want to share with everybody today, interesting story, because obviously a lot of Jews, except for the very, very left-wing Jews, anti-Zionist Jews, they, are, they support this, uh, this boycott. But other than that, Jews, obviously, such as myself, uh, oppose. I don't. I won't buy Ben and Jerry's anymore. I just won't buy it. I mean, you do what you want. I, I never say buy this, don't buy that. It's up to you. But I, I will not buy Ben and Jerry's. And I am happy to see. Well, let's put this this chart up. As you can see from the chart, the Unilever stock has gone way down. It's been going way down. And I hope. I, I would love to know that this uh, reaction against the boycott has something to do with it. I don't know why Unilever is still allowing this if it's affecting their, their stock price. It makes no sense to me, but so much of what the left does makes no sense to me, so that's not unusual. Anyways, what is unusual or something I wasn't expecting, well, here's the headline. Palestinian, Palestinian sues over Ben and Jerry's boycott, saying it promotes, quote, hatred, unquote. A prominent Palestinian human rights activist recently filed a complaint in New York State. That's why I say it's local, but it has to do with the Middle East. Charging that uh, Ben and Jerry's boycott in the West Bank and occupied territories is contributing to, quote, more hatred, unquote, in the strife-prone region. Bassem Eid, or Eid, I'm not sure, uh, forgive me if I got it wrong. Uh, well, I'm covered e either way. I said Eid and Eid. Uh, Bassem Eid, I think it's Eid, 63, filed the complaint with New York State's Division of Human Rights last month against Kano. Co. Incorporated, the U.S. Division of Unilever that owns the popular ice cream brand. Eid, uh, I'm going to go with Eid, okay, forgive me if that's wrong. Eid, a longtime activist who has been critical of abuses by both Israeli armed forces and the Palestinian Authority in the past, so he's fair, obviously, he criticizes both sides, claimed the restriction on sales of ice cream in Israeli-occupied territories is, quote, counterproductive to peace and creates only more hatred, enmity, and polarization, unquote, according to the complaint. Quote, I as a Palestinian, as well as many of my friends, family, and other Palestinians are regular shoppers at Gush Etzion Commercial Center, where we also frequent to eat ice cream. This shopping area is the true realization, and this is important because, well, uh, uh, let me just finish here. This shopping area is the true realization of coexistence as both Jews and Muslims from both Israel and the Palestinian controlled territories work and shop here, unquote, he said. I was just going to mention that there's this giant, I don't remember the name of it, there's an enormous Israeli, I think they're the biggest uh, supermarket chain in uh, Israel, and they they have a supermarket in, in the Palestinian areas, and the Palestinian Authority, as usual, is urging Palestinians not to shop there, but they are, and that's the point I want to make, that uh, I was going to go further, well, I'll throw this in right now. Uh, the United Arab Emirates in Israel, I'm not going to put up a headline, but it's an article I read just this morning. I'm recording this on Thursday. You're seeing it the next day, Friday. But uh, uh, United Arab uh, Emirates in Israel, this is from the Abraham Accords, for which we have um, Donald Trump to thank, the Abraham Accords. But the U, uh, United Arab Emirates in Israel trade exceeds expectations. That was an, that's an exact quote from the article, exceeds expectations. It's approaching $1 billion in trade. They had thought, the, the people involved, thought or expected it, that it would take years to reach the one billion mark and they're already approaching it. So it's more successful than ever. And that was the, the point that I, I wanted to make. There is this increasing, at the same time you have this BDS movement, but in the Middle East, you're seeing an increasing warming of ties and cooperation between Israel and the surrounding Muslim states. And I, I mentioned 
Libya is reaching out. Morocco just, uh, they're going to purchase some weapons from Israel. I, I do have to say about Morocco, uh, they're unique among Arab states that they have always been good to their Jewish population. So I want to give them credit for that. But unlike some of these other um, Arab states, but that's changing. And the Palestinians, the idea was to isolate Israel, but it's the Palestinians who are becoming more and more isolated. But uh, let me get back to that uh, subject for another day, I guess, if I want to expand on it. So back to the article. Eid, Bassem Eid, likened the boycott to the controversial boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, BDS, which many Jews have criticized as anti-Semitic, because it is. The complaint was filed under New York State's Lisa law that prevents New York businesses from engaging in anti-Israel boycott activity, said David Abrams, a New York-based attorney who filed the complaint on Eid's behalf. Quote, the gangsters behind the BDS BDS are causing a lot of damage to the Palestinians, unquote, said Eid in a telephone interview from his home in Jericho. Quote, I want to raise awareness among the U.S. judicial system about how much damage they are causing. If they poured all, this is the important part and important part, uh, if they poured all the money that they are spending on boycotts into building factories and creating jobs in the West Bank and Gaza, it would go a long way to truly helping Palestinians. Palestinians, unquote, which is an echo of something that I have said, that there would be peace. Uh, well, Golda Meir said that there would be peace in the Middle East when the Arabs cared about their own children more than they hated Israel. And my, what my belief is as a corollary, corollary of that, which is that when the, the West and, and liberals decide that they care more about the Palestinians and they hate Israel, then some progress could be made. Then there would be peace because this hurts the Palestinians. It doesn't hurt the Israel Israelis. Israelis know how to make ice cream. Israelis know how to make ice cream. And I, I believe they're already making a, a knockoff uh, of the, the Ben and Jerry's ice cream. You're not depriving them of anything. You're just depriving the, uh, the Palestinians. Well, I guess the Palestinians can buy the... the uh, uh, Israeli ice cream too. So it, it's just uh, liberals venting again. But let me get, finish uh, up the article. Eid's complaint comes on the heels of the New York State Controller's announcement last month that the state was pulling its pension fund investments from Unilever. New Jersey has also pledged to divest $182 million in Unilever stock and bonds held by its pension funds over the boycott in Israel or Israeli occupied territories. Other states, including Texas and Florida, have taken uh, similar action. So again, whom do they, th they think they're hurting? Unilever stock. I showed you the chart. Their stock is going down. Uh, people are divesting. States are divesting. And, uh, well, one more paragraph. A spokesman for Ben & Jerry's refused comment and referred a reporter to a page on the company's website where it addresses the boycott. Quote, speaking and acting on our values is neither anti-Israel nor anti-Semitic, unquote, the website says. Uh, unless, of course, your values are anti-Israel and anti-Semitic, which is what this is. I'm sorry, this is what this is. And uh, may, maybe not Unilever, but definitely the, the people running Ben & Jerry's, which is no longer Ben & Jerry's, by the way. They sold Ben & Jerry's, or Ben & Jerry's sold Ben & Jerry's a long time ago. But that's it for today. Thanks, as always, for stopping by. I appreciate the time that you spend with me. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions for future topics, you can put them in the comment section below the videos. You can give me a, a thumbs up if you like this video. See, thumbs up, giving you an example here. You could subscribe. Love getting new subscribers. You could share this video with anybody you think would also like it. But most of all, come back and see me again. I would love to see all of you again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.